Illinois with, I hope I'm pronouncing it, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. <laughs> Welcome to Reading Around the World. My name is Daniela and for those who are new here, this is basically a series I do every three months or so um, where I basically keep myself accountable of, of the books I read throughout these months. So my goal is to read a book written by an author from every single country around the world plus USA because I want to read from every single state in the USA. Uh, so this is a little motivation for myself. I also have a map that um, is basically a scratch off map. I'll show you like a peak, um, but I will show you at the end because I have updated it. So yay for that. This is the third episode of this series, I believe um, it should be. So please check out the others as well. And let's get started. Let's talk about the book. Usually I don't mention books that I read from foreign countries that I have already read from, but this time I thought I will because it, it's just, it gives you perhaps a suggestion of what book to read and what was my opinion. Again, opinions are subjective, but these are mine. And I thought it'd be fun just as a little side note at the end. So we'll do that as well. And I will start in a chronological order. So let's do it. The first country we're going to is Puerto Rico with Emma Goldrick, Love is in the Cards. Uh, the author's original name, I Googled this, is Emma Elizabeth Jean Sutcliffe. And she was born in Puerto Rico. That's why this book, I gave this a two star uh, out of five. It just, it wasn't for me. <laughs> it's very much a romance book about um, Peggy and James. So Peggy lives uh, in the Caribbean islands and she has a plantation that isn't doing so well. And James gets like stumbles on her farm one day and ends up in a ditch. So Peggy helps him recover his health and James just so happens to be a millionaire, of course he does, and um, he helps her with the arrowroot, that's what she grows on the plantation, she helps with the um, the selling of the plant and just make sure that she's fine and it's just, the characters are so infuriating and the amount of times that James mentions that Peggy looks like she's 16 or 17 even though she's like 20 something just it was ick and there's also part of her being a virgin and it's just i was like nah this book was written in the 90s so the original hardcover for this was in 1990 so this does have quite some time since it was published but i just no this was not for me but i am glad i read from another country though i don't know if this counts i I don't know, this is Puerto Rico, take it as you will. The next country I went with was Russia with Fyodor Dostoevsky's White Knights. This is a um, series of two stories, there's White Knights and Bobok. And I heard so much about this book that I asked for it for my birthday. The back says that it's two devastating Russian stories of solitude, unrequired love and depravity from beyond the grave. And the back just sounds so good, but I was underwhelmed by this book. I gave this book a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It just, it left me wanting more. Again, the main character is underage in the beginning, well, in the flashback or whatever, and she falls in love with um, a 26 or 27 year old, uh, but he leaves. So one day she meets this guy on the street and they get talking and my explanation is terrible, but I did not particularly enjoy the first story. Uh, the second story was fine. It was about this guy being bored out of his life and he goes to a cemetery because that's what regular people do apparently and um, somehow he falls asleep uh, and while asleep he hears noises and that's from the people in the graves because their spirits are still alive or something like that and um, I did like that. I 
again, it was missing something, but I did enjoy reading the second one, the idea in itself and everything. So um, give it a try if you want to. Um, I definitely believe there are far better books by Fyodor Dostoevsky, but this is a nice introduction to him, if you will, because his books are mammoths that take ages to read for some people. And this is a nice little entry, if you will. So this was Russia. After that, I have Friends with uh, the Veiled Woman by Anais Nin. This is part of the Penguin Modern collection. And these is a collection of four stories. They're very short, like 10 to 15 pages each. And on the back of the book, it says transgressive desires and sexual encounters are recounted in these four pieces from one of the greatest writers of erotic fiction. So all of the stories have an erotic element in it, but they are from the, well, most of them, like three of them are from the perspective of the women, uh, which I found great because usually you get the male gaze and this time you're fully in the female gaze. It's just... I don't want to say empowering because some of these women make stupid, stupid decisions. Um, but it was charming, if you will. Um, some of the writing is absurd as well, but I really enjoyed it, which is why I gave it a five stars. I did not expect it, but I did really enjoy it. Also, another thing about this book, the last thing I want to mention is the plot twist in the first story will make the entire book worth it at least it did for me it's just so good again these little books are a fantastic introduction to specific authors that you might have never picked up so I definitely recommend checking this out I personally loved it and this is another book on my world map the next book we have Poland with the three electronides by Stanislaw Lem again a collection of short stories this has four short stories as well and on the back it says from a giant of 20th century science fiction these four miniature space epic feature crazy inventors surreal worlds robot kings and madcap machines and this is what it delivered. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I love two of the stories, uh, the three Electronites and the White Death, um, but I didn't particularly enjoy as much the other two, but I do think the author has this amazing power of creating worlds and a plot, and it's just in such a short space, because each story is again 10 15 pages so it isn't a lot but it's so well written and i never heard about this author that is on me but i am so glad i found out about him because i really enjoyed it and science fiction isn't necessarily a subject i like a genre i always go for because it's just not for me there's a lot of world building that you have to do in it um, but the fact that he was able to do that in 10 pages and still keep you hooked was great. So I do recommend. After that, I have states in the USA. Um, these again, like I said, I divided USA by all its states and I want to read a book from every single one of them. Now, since this is a country, I do look at where the author was born. It doesn't matter that they moved. I know that might not seem wise or fair, but it's just, it's how I'm doing this. So let's go through them. First, I went to New Hampshire with Lorelei's Secret by Carolyn Parkhurst. In the US, this was published as The Dogs of Babel. And Lorelei's Secret is such a much better title. It just is so much better. Um, basically, it's about this woman who falls from a tree and dies. Um, and the only witness to her death is her dog Lorelai. So her husband keeps trying to find ways to make Lorelai talk just so he can find out how his wife died. And it's just the entire endeavor, like from the moment she died, it kind of gives you flashbacks in their life. And it's so good. This is also first person narration and 
I hate first person narrations. But I love this. It is so good. The writing was amazing. The emotions that the main character goes through are so believable and you can you can visualize the stages of grief that this man goes through they're so good and it also has a little bit of an unexpected action in it if you will i don't want to spoil it because it will give away a lot of the book but I genuinely loved it. I gave this a five star and this was a fantastic book that I would recommend to everyone. So please pick it up if you ever see it because I loved it. it. It was great, at least for me. Again, all opinions are mine. Maybe you hate the ones I have, but that's what I'm here for, to give you my opinions. So this was New Hampshire. After that, I went to Virginia with The Sixth Man by David Baldacci. This is part of the King and Maxwell thriller series. This is the fifth book, I believe, I think. Um, but you can totally read it as a standalone. I did, I haven't read any of the others in the series. And this was such a fun book. Personally, I love thrillers, I love mysteries, I love action, so I really like. This also looks like a mammoth of the book, look at this, but I blazed through it. It was so quick, it was so entertaining, the amount of plot twist, you thought you knew one character and the next moment they were completely doing something you didn't expect them. The good are evil, the evil are good, the um, just everything and you are hooked to the last page. It's just, I never heard about this book and I'm so glad I did because it was so, so good, so well written, all the action. Like there isn't any action that doesn't feel necessary because a lot of books just put things in there just for the sake of it, but with this one, I enjoyed every single page, so definitely recommend another five stars. I had a blast with this book, so definitely my cup of tea. So this was The Sixth Man from Virginia. Next we go to Massachusetts. This is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. Um, I gave this a 425 out of five stars. Um, let me tell you what it is about also. <laughs> um, this is about a, a rich beautiful young woman she's like 21 22 i don't remember how old she turns but she's very young both her parents have recently passed away but she didn't have a good relationship with them and one year she just decides to sleep for the entire year she is um very much a drug addict and by drug i mean like prescription medicine well medication she takes everything she gets her hand on she gets uh blackouts and there are a lot of things she doesn't remember there are some flashbacks to her childhood if you will and there's so much in this book but not a lot happens um it's also set in the year 2000 and there's so many references to both TV shows, famous people, um, brands, and I do feel like this book might be obsolete <laughs> in the future because there are so many references. I got like three quarters of them, but there were other famous people that I had no idea who they were. And frankly, I didn't bother Googling it, but um, you do get TV shows like Friends and stuff like that. Um, but I love this book, genuinely, genuinely really liked it. I did think there was something missing, like they could have pushed it a little bit more, but just going into the head of the main character and the way she sees the world was fascinating and I would definitely recommend this. Uh, maybe not to everyone, but I would recommend that you read this. It's just, it's just nice. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Let's go for weird because not everyone would understand this book. Um, but I liked it. So 
this was Massachusetts. And the last book that I read from US was Illinois with, I hope I'm pronouncing it, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois? I'm from Europe, okay? <laughs> Give me some slack. Was Becoming by Michelle Obama, can you see that? Um, this was a fantastic book. This is a memoir. This um, takes you through the life of Michelle Obama from the moment she was born um, until the end of the second presidential campaign of Barack Obama and it just goes through her early life, her education, meeting her husband and then um, the campaign, the first presidency and the second presidency and the way she saw life and what I loved about this book is how, <laughs> this will sound awful, but I loved how lost she was in the beginning of her life when she was like 25, 27, still trying to figure life out and it's just, it was so comforting to read as a 24 year old and realize that People don't have everything figured out and that's okay because you will figure it out as you go and things do change so don't put too much pressure on yourself at least that's what I got from this book and that's why I loved it so much so I gave it five stars also the way she narrates everything was so so well written I thought this would drag and I've been postponing this book for so long because I had it on my bookshelf forever but the moment I picked it up I went through it it's just so so entertaining it definitely keeps your attention um, and I would definitely recommend this so this was becoming and this is the last date that I went through in the US so those are all the books that were from new countries or new states in the US that I haven't read from previously. Now, let me tell you about some books from countries I have been before, but it's just, I read from those countries again, if that makes sense. Also here, I am ignoring USA. I'm not going to talk about books from states I've already been through, because it's just, they're American authors. There are a lot of books from American authors. You can find them everywhere. So let me tell you about countries I've been to already. So first we have Japan. I love Japanese authors, I just really do. The first one is um, three Japanese short stories by Akutagawa and others. The others being um, Nagai Kafu, Uno Koji, and obviously Akutagawa Ryonosuke. And um, this is again part of the Penguin Modern collection. Um, I did think they were really nice. I just, it was kind of, uh. um, <laughs> I gave this a 3.25. It was basically um, three stories um, centered around three different men as they kind of see life. This definitely gave me, you know, those videos on YouTube that are basically day in my life. This is what they felt like, but it's about men that, young men mostly, um, I say mostly, that um, have nothing to do in their life. Uh, in one of these, the father was very rich, so he just stayed in the back of the house. And another is about this guy who lives in um, an apartment, but he always stays in the closet and just watches the world go around him without doing anything. And it was interesting, but at one point it became boring. It's just, there are three different authors, but it felt like I was reading the same thing. And it just kind of dragged a bit. There was. It's just, it wasn't for me, but this is one of the books from Japan. And the other was The Cat Who Saved Books. Can you see that? By Sosuke Natsukawa, translated by Louise Hill Kawaii. And this was a present from one of my friends. And I love this. I gave this a 4.5. I did think something was missing from it, but it's basically about this boy whose grandfather dies and um, he's still in high school, but his grandfather owned a bookstore. And now that he's dead, he has to, the boy has to clo close the bookstore and move in with his aunt. Uh, but before he does that, he meets a cat who asks for help to save books and they go through four different labyrinths or like trials um in which he meets different 
scenarios and has to help the books. Um, and I really, really liked it. This is going to get a second book from what I saw online in like 2025, so next year. Um, this is from Picador Publishing and I love books from Picador Publishing. Before the Coffee Goes Cold is also from Picador Publishing and that's like my favorite. Um, I just love it. It is very repetitive, <laughs> but I love it. It's just magical realism is my way to go. So these were two books from Japan that I read and I would recommend this one. This not so much but it is very short, so if you want a little introduction to Japanese literature, you can check this out. Um, but again, there are better books, obviously. Um, so these were the two from Japan. After that, I have China with Heaven's Official Blessing by Moksyang Tongsu. Quick pause, I was actually supposed to show you the second volume. This is the first one, but just pretend this is the second, so yeah. Thanks. Uh, this is a Dunmei, which is basically a men love book where both of the main characters are men and they kind of fall in love. And this is the second volume. Um, and I loved it. It just, <laughs> I love this series. This was even better than the first one. I don't know how, but it's just so much better. The art is also gorgeous. Can you see that? The art is absolutely stunning and I personally love these, that's why I'm reading them, obviously, but um, this is not the best representation of Chinese literature. <laughs> I want to point that out, um, but it's something I enjoy reading, so it's what I read, okay? This was China. After that, I read Patrick Kavanaugh, The Great Hunger. This is an Irish author. I gave this two stars? Yeah, I gave this two stars. This is basically a collection of poems that again show day-to-day -day life in Ireland. The main poem from this is the name of the book, The Great Hunger, and it's about this farmer um, and his life. And it also happened to be my least favorite of the book. So... <laughs> Do what you will with that, but I know a lot of people enjoyed this, so this is Ireland. And the last book that I want to talk about, which I will not put as a book on my map, is technically a book from Zambia, but it's not. Um, it's Wilbur Smith, The Seventh Scroll, and I googled this because I had to be sure. Wilbur Smith was born in Northern Rhodesia. So Northern Rhodesia is basically Zambia now. It was a British protectorate, which is the nice way of saying that it was places the British colonized and after a while they left. So now that place is Zambia, but this feels like a British author, okay? I want to read books from Zambia that are written by people that were born in Zambia now and not when the British just took over because that feels wrong. <laughs> it might just be me, but there's I googled it. There's so many great books that I can pick to have my map like the Zambia scratch off, so I will hold on on that because this just doesn't feel right. I don't want a British man for a Zambia. So this was the last book, I guess. I just wanted to mention why I will never count this as a Zambian author, um, just because it doesn't feel right. You can tell me if you think different, but this is my opinion. So that was it. So those were the books. Now let me show you the map progress because it's a lot. Also, look at this. Let me first show you and then. Can you see that? I did some progress in Europe. Can you see that? There's a lot of progress in Russia. I mean that like, I read one book from Russia and half of the map is gone. So <laughs> it's great. 
I also did a lot of progress in USA, but a lot of the states are small and for all the US states, I have to meticulously Google where they are because I obviously know where the country is, but with states, nobody teaches you US states in Europe. It's just, why would you? Um, so that was it. That was my update on the books around the world that I have read. Um, I'm hoping to read more diverse, but I feel like so far I'm doing a great job, though arguably a lot of those are from US. But again, I'm reading for pleasure. I don't want to um, constrain myself to certain books that I might not necessarily enjoy. And um, I read as I go, so you never know. But I do want to read more diversified so if you have any suggestions for any country that you think please leave them below and please tell me if you are reading anything from a foreign country i don't want to say foreign countries because technically all countries are foreign but from non-english speaking countries so from countries that aren't uk I want to say Australia, but I haven't read one from an Australian author yet, so I do have to do that. Um, but just people, authors that are from the UK are banned. <laughs> I mean that as in I read already so many of them that I want to read something else. So give me something else. Um, Australian author will also be great so I can scratch off Australia because I forgot I have to do that as well. <laughs> so there we go. And so if you liked it, please consider liking this video and please consider subscribing because I talk about books a lot and I hope you'll be here next time I do so as well. Uh, I also have a second channel where I play Sims. If you're interested, please check it out and I will see you next time. Bye bye. I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls